right. To start this story off, deep in the forests of Shenmen, far and away from any of the empires that have risen and fallen a century before the Age of Lost Omens has come to pass, is the small remote village of Willowshore. Now, in Willowshore, there is an annual, beautiful reenactment festival. And during this festival, it's a following massive feast to celebrate the end of the season on the last day of spring. The place was abuzz with the warm, fresh, sense of food and the bustling of the townspeople as eventually this foggy memory of what's happened last night, whether due to drinks or exhaustion, had you snatched away by villagers in paper masks, whether you were consenting or put into the position to be an abductee. You plunged the townsfolk into a pretend collective panic as designated wailers mourned loudly for you all. Others played out a search and rescue, heading to the west across the beautiful bridge. This farce, of course, is only to trick the real ghosts, if you believe in such things, into thinking that someone has already haunted the settlement and thus should seek a happier village to inflict their misery upon. As each of you recall, playing your roles of the abductees, you must spend the night wrapped in a straw mat. And I have to ask, one by one, who are you? And why? Did you become an abductee? Or at the very least, why were you forced into being an abductee? And what do you remember doing during the reenactment festival? I will start alphabetically. Darby, tell me Introduce your character, what they would remember of him during the last night, what they may know of them, and what was their predisposition to being an abductee in the reenactment festival in the celebration of the new summer. Whereas is uh, someone everyone is relatively familiar with around town, a fortune teller, uh, the whispers of uh, smoke telling that he does at the uh, the songbird. Uh, as for what he's doing here at the reenactment, uh, most keep distance from him, but uh, he seems more in touch with uh, the reenactment itself and the individual was chosen with it. Uh, his own sister was uh, picked for tea, partake into it, and worried more that she would uh, mess the whole thing up. And so he got one of the uh, elders to make sure he was included uh, to keep an eye on her uh, without her knowing. Oh my. And it which one was that? Or should we keep it private? It will be soon revealed. Very well. Happily adjoining this circumstance, as you're brought away and into the forest to the sound of wailers crying out for you to seek you out, someone is also wrapped up beside you, being carried on the underarm. 
Um, introduce me to this lovely snake you have. Or more in particular, your character. Okay. Um, this is uh, uh, Joe Ben. Uh, uh, he is known around town as the um, brother of the owner of uh, the current owner of the Mother's Coil. Uh, he has spent uh, a lot of time, you know, doing a little bit of odd jobs around the town, helping people repair, you know, broken hinges or um, doing, doing, you know, helping around. Uh, he's a They've, he's known to be a good listener. So as he goes and helps people, they usually tell him about his day and he just listens while helping. Um, many of the elders think he's a pretty uh, decent person. Um, for this reenactment, uh, uh, last year, um, after uh, his adopted uh, uh, mother, the previous owner of the mother's coil had passed away, um, uh, his sister, the current owner, was the one who was chosen to run, do it last year. So it's only right that uh, since she did it last year, she has to do it this year. And so that's why he's uh, taking part in this uh, reenactment. Um, he, you know, it's it's something that the village village does, and he doesn't think too much of it, anything seriously about it. And so he's just going with it to get us over with. Excellent. Did you get to finish your cup of tea before they took you? Sadly, no. Ooh. Very well. We will move on then, as you are also carried away into the brushes, beside someone who's more familiar, at the very least, to them. Twenty-two. could you introduce me to your character? And why or how they acted during the reenactment festival. Lua Si Yin is a man of two worlds in this place. He is one of the local woodsmen, and he has a role in town of, he is the brother to the town lawyer. Um, they are very opposite individuals, as you will learn. He will be around town doing errands for her or idling away playing his flute and possibly in public places or off into the Shrine of Phrasma. When he's not in town, he's out in the wilderness um, ensuring that the wildlife doesn't get too close to the town or saving the occasional lost villager or just patrolling the area, making sure the dangers are at bay. He joined the festival at the request of his sister, as recently he is becoming more and more distant to Willow Shore. Um, the people there are getting to be more and more frustrating to him, and he likes the simplicity of the wilds. And when she requested him to do this with the festival, it was to reconnect him with the town. And so she is the older sister, and she is wiser. And so therefore he's thought, this is probably a good idea, and joined willingly for this moment. Excellent. And as you brought away, perhaps to a more comfortable, more comfortable environment, your shoulders sag, and you let out a breath of fresh air. Let's shift over to perhaps someone who is more comfortable in town, but Perhaps needs, maybe, I would say, three people to carry them in the straw mat? Uh, yes. There is definitely a crew of villagers who have to carry Katai for the festival. She is a very large and swole orc woman. And she absolutely volunteered to be an abductee this season. She does this every year. At the festival, she likes to perform shadow puppet shows um, to kind of tell myths and stories about the history of Willow Shore and maybe instill some lessons into those who are watching. Uh, she is known as the Guardian of the Lantern throughout most of the town. She is usually seen on the bridge where the Eternal Lantern rests, 
and she is often seen meditating by it or pacing around it, keeping it safe from any kind of threat that might be coming to snuff it out. Not that any has ever arisen. Yeah, just in case, you know. Mm -hmm. And as people groan and pull you along the way, I have to ask, Fang, are you, you or little you, during your carry out back into the wilds? I'm just me. Perfect. Perfect. As your tail flaps in the wind and being held at a direction you're probably not comfortable with, being carried away by the masked villagers that let out wails and hoos and boos of ghosts. What did you do during the festival? So Fang it never had any interest in partaking in the festival. Um, many of the villagers know of him, but only when he's walking through town or sighted at a tea house, they normally see him in the neighboring woods, kind of walking around, always up to something. They, they're just not quite sure what. Um, he was venturing through the town during the festival to head up to the Great Willow um, for the night when he was um, kind of grabbed by the arm by a certain town official. Um, and he was basically persuaded to partake in the festival through the promises of free food. And knowing he would not have to spend the night and morning foraging, he obliged. Of course, participating in the festival became becoming an abductee very quickly. Unfortunately for you. However, the sweet sound of the promise of one of the many villagers... In particular, a man of his word would call out towards you all, or at least maybe he would have brought you aside and mentioned breakfast in the morning. Ransom for the ghosts, of course. Not for you. How could it be? And so you are taken east out of town. At least this is all what you remember. This is what you experienced in that hazy reenactment festival that perhaps a couple of you had a bit too much to drink in or were exhausted by the end nonetheless rolled up in straw mats and brought into the forest the night clung and one by one eventually each of you would have fallen asleep And that's where we'll begin our campaign. As you gather yourselves, you feel the shifting weight of mortality bring back your exhaustion into your bodies. Some of you who slept at an angle far too upright or downright would have thumping in your heads, feeling your heartbeat throb. Immediately, those of you more attuned to nature can feel the cling of the dew and moisture of the morning. But it hangs heavy, this humidity. It clings to your furs and skin, making everything feel a bit more weighty. As you gather yourselves one by one, waking up at what would seem to be an eerily similar time, you look around to each other, and something is off. The straw mats you were ceremoniously trussed up in, as you look at them, appear to be cruder. Your red blindfolds, well, they are 
wet. Your clothing is filthy. Your faces are pressed in the mud. And you feel odd. As each of you awaken to look around to each other, you see your fellow abductees. But could I get at least Fang and anyone else that wishes to to give me a nature check to begin this campaign? First roll the campaign, Remy. Do you want it private or do you want re uh, knowledge checks on the table? Um, This one can be on the table. All right. We have a 12 and a 20, correct? That's what you got. Fang. Waking up something is odd. You're not even sure where you are. But you know it's not the same smells where you were put down. You realize... You've awoken in an entirely different part of the woods. Your straw mats seem almost mishandled. And the way that you've fallen appears as though you were more dropped than laid down to rest for the night. There is no breakfast waiting for you. And as you struggle with your arms, I seem to start to break free of your bondage. See, Yin, you would recognize where you are in relation to Willowshore. You also recognize that you shouldn't be here. For you're on the entirely opposite side of the woods in the west. You are in the east now, but you see no tracks for where you had abductees walk you here. Though there is a familiar trail you've taken many times to head back to town. These are the things that you immediately notice. Tell me. What do you do? I think it's this you're doing. I know you're a trickster. I was abducted just like you. There's no way this could have been me. Where are we? We're on the east side of Willow Shore. Let's get the others. Rummaging Fang. and rolling. Go ahead. Yeah, Fang will uh, break out and try to break out the others. He'll immediately go to Jobin and break him out first. He knows Jobin is not quite strong and may need help. Okay. Who you do you see? Th uh... Go ahead, Jobin. Well, you can see Jobin is actually still uh, sleeping. <laughs> I was actually going to ask who amongst you would still be asleep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Itai is still sleeping. Mm. Seeing Jobin asleep and vulnerable, um, Fang will pull out his uh, canteen and kind of make a little basin of water, and he'll put Jobin's hand in it. Just to see what happens. Jobin. Um, if you want. As you do it... Uh... Um, you'd see a uh, 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 uh kind of uh, <clears throat> kind of slither from uh, inside of his jacket, and look look at you what you're doing, and I guess just uh, do a small hiss. Nothing threatening, just like just like what you're doing. I'm not doing anything, Mushi. Don't worry about it. I speak to him. Uh, am I Mushi or you, Jobin? 
or Dom? Uh, you could be Mushi, sure. I'll leave it to you. He can have his own personality. Okay. You see the flick of the snake's tongue towards the canteen. Uh, would Mushi refer to you as master or as friend? Um, hmm, I guess master. Mm -hmm. You would hear, This is not the flavored water master enjoys, nor where he drinks it from. I got you. Um, Fink kind of like scurries around and he gets some leaves and he, he puts them in the water. And he uh, produces a little flame in his hand and begins to heat it up. Excellent. Fang, as you begin to move towards the brushes and the leaves, there is a crackling in them. A movement. But not something stepping on a branch. Something uprooting one as you feel your paws touch the ground to collect these leaves and you begin to cast your magic there's something in the dirt around here something big uh can i like recall knowledge to see if i could have any idea what it would be in you this may. part of the woods Oh, I'm not doing great today. An 11. There are many things that uh, could be around this part of the woods. Things that would be underground, you're not so sure. Especially that big. It could be many things. But one thing that would perhaps throw you for a moment is that it could be one of the very large centipedes that often burrow under the ground but it's odd that it would be close and near to you especially this close to a group of people okay yeah seeing this uh thing kind of like cuts the games and uh he'll just go and wake everybody up um, okay not sure the sense of the centipede's intent his vulpine ears will kind of like twitch like he's listening for it to say something but it may just be you know acting predatorily like a predator so he'll rush over and wake up Jobin and he'll look at uh, C to see what C's been up to he's just been getting up to tie and rouse okay I will put you here well man fang uh we got breakfast. Is breakfast here? No. Someone's playing a trick on us. We're in the wrong part of the woods. There uh, could be danger. Hearing, hearing that, uh, wrong part of the woods, hearing that, uh, Jobin, like, like stiffens up and straight sits up and is like, uh, fixes his glasses and starts to look around. He says, uh, oh, uh, Wait, where are we? The wrong part of the woods. We're on the exact opposite side of town we're supposed to be. How's that happen? There must like have I been said, a change of plans. Someone's playing a trick on us. Um, and as he says that, Jobin, he kind of like... Um, tries to like nimbly take his canteen that your hand was in uh, and uh stash it really quick and he like t he went to go fix his glasses he realized his hand was wet and like just shook it you know to dry it off rubbed it on his on his cloak on his uh clothes this, this place is dirt, covered in mud oh what why did we do this why did i do this we did it for food or at least I do. I'll alert um, everyone else now that um, Kite and uh, Raz are up about the centipede. 
Thai will flex off her bonds uh, uh, from the rug. As they snap off, do you also flex off your blindfold? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just asking. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it falls uh, off with an easy flex. Excellent. Mm -hmm. You are Those welcome. Those don't look like we're supposed to be here. This is different. Is, are, is there tracks around us? Like there was a number of people that brought us out here and then they just took off in a certain direction. Is there anything else unusual? Uh, Neil, you can give me, like as, a, as you kneel down and begin to look for your own tracks, let alone others, there's nothing immediately apparent other than the trail ahead of you. But give me, I would say, a survival. See, and whether or not it's the grogginess of last night or something that hits you, the tracks, they don't appear to be easy to find. It's as though they've perhaps been either more distant or muddied by the slick morning, though it's not raining, perhaps it did last night. But something else is marring your vision. When you go to focus on the ground, it's like there is a thick coagulation of a mist that just sort of pollutes your eyesight. It makes its way forward and past you all and into the trees. And as you all speak, you would hear not too far away in the bushes Ooh. Is C in armed? You would have your equipment, yes, beside you. What you would be feeling safe would be with you in the woods, something that could grant you safety. He draws his weapon. Mm. The ghost wow. must have brought us here well, late, late at night. It's no. There's no. There's not supposed to be any ghosts. It's supposed yeah, to be uh, no uh, villagers help, help. You know, pretending. Maybe the ghosts came early. What ghosts? This is a tree. You don't. Do you actually? That's what we do. This is to, to trick the ghosts. But what if they didn't fall for it this time? Who's that out seems there? To be the only explanation. Fango kind of call out. I've had enough of your games. Delicious. See, so Yen gives oh. Fang a look. I we guess should, what... we should get them out of here. Yes, we should. Town is Wait. that way. Let's start moving. Wait a minute. Which Grass? direction are we hearing? What are you? What are you doing here? You never participate in these. Uh, no, I might not, no, but uh, it was a special ass this year. It's dangerous to be out here. Katai, as you say that, behind Ross, you'd see like a snake slithering under parchment, or a worm digging through dirt, something the size of your brother worms between his legs for a moment and ross I... you are almost thrown up a little bit by the weight of it pushing you up off the ground i i grab ross and i like hold him just off the ground lightly do you resist it's... ross uh, i think he's too startled to resist mm -hmm. pull out my katana with my other hand <laughs> hey, I mean, I know I don't do these very much, but let's not put the, put the weapon away. There's danger. They're right, we should go. Yes. No. No, no, no. Food. Eyeballs. Tendons. 
Are you a coward that you hide in these bushes? Yeah, maybe we shouldn't uh, yeah, antagonize him. Can we just, can we can we head back to town? Thing uh, would like to kind of like do a like perceive, you know, where this voice is coming from. See if he can see anyone or anything. Okay, thing. Uh, yeah, give me a. Uh, I think you can use perception, right? Yep. Go for it. Yeah, you see very clearly what's doing it. You see in the bushes not too far away, the carapace of what you I correctly identify as exactly what you thought it was. A long, snaking figure with dozens upon dozens of flickering legs, mandibles that are crimson and red, and six eyes and whiskers that come up off the ground feelers to find food under the ground one of them has split their head just above the ground watch us uh, from behind oh god fang will kind of like look out at him you have misjudged do your hunting elsewhere we are not your food today <laughs> Guns. You hear from behind you, thing, another. Ligaments. Tall nails. Are, are, are they speaking a language that we understand? All of you. Perhaps Fang isn't aware of it, but all of you hear these words. Chittering from their mouths. That's not normal, right? I don't think so. Right? <laughs> no, 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 not normal. <laughs> what? Uh, Katai is going to motion yeah. for Jobin and Fang to kind of move behind her or behind Yin. Yeah, at this point, um, Fang is starting to realize that there are multiple of them and that they are not going to be easily talked down so like lightning will start to crackle um in his hands and he'll kind of like pump up his chest and he'll say hunt elsewhere or else this is your only chance <laughs> no hunt you can roll initiative. Oh god, we're in it. This would be based on perception to see the first one dart so quickly towards you. I all think right. I'm going to re-roll my initiative with uh, your point. I hope you all don't die. <laughs> oh, where'd my initiative go? Do you mind if I re-roll it with a hero go point? Oh, it. I didn't even roll it yet. Oh. See, it, it's right... It... Oh, it didn't go oh, no, there we go. Now I'll re-roll it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All yeah. right. Fang is on there twice. Oh, <gasps> am I on there twice? Oh, that's yeah. why I was so confused. Okay. He's got a duplicate. You have a duplicate? I can remove one of them. I'll remove yep. the nine. That's fine. There you go. All right. Any more rerolls? Okay. Uh, Katai. As you are watching, your ally begin to charge lightning between their fur and fingers, begin to threaten them. You almost recognize it before the rest of them, that they almost seem goaded, or at the very least, were waiting for you to make a quick movement, and they just can't resist it anymore. And they begin to worm their way, slithering through the ground towards you. As they start to make their move, the, the mouth... Uh, on my stomach opens up and the tentacle tongue uh, begins to slide out 
as I get ready for combat. And I'm gonna cast a spell. Oh! What does that spell look like? Uh, so I have two hands on my katana. I'm able to cast this because I'm just that cool. Uh, so I briefly take a hand off my katana and this red kind of circle of thorns uh, kind of coalesces in my palm uh, and it kind of explodes when I finish casting the spell almost like sunlight. Like a new dawn. As I cast Ooh. shield arm and as the circle explodes, uh, the sunlight kind of sticks to Katai's arm uh, and coats it in this uh, metal of some kind, like this glowing white metal. And I use my third action to raise the shield. <laughs> Perfect. Full turn? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's two actions, so yeah. Excellent. You brace against the one that is coming over to flank. The one that moves the quickest is what appears to be the youngest. It flails through the air with a strange sensation, and it dives towards you, Fang. It will stride, and then attack. As it rears back with its strange coloration, you know that can mean only good things in the natural world. It will open up its mandibles, draw its feelers around your fur and neck, and then go to bite into you as it raises up to your height. You were private. Oh, I apologize. A 13 misses. You're able to bring your arm to the side before they go for a cheap bite into your shoulder. And as they split into the ground, they burrow for a second before rearing back up for a another bite. For another, but critical, miss. It slams into your side. Luckily, you were prepared for such a predictable attack. As it lets out a chitter, you put up a hand that is pulsing with lightning, and you repel it. It looks up towards you greedily and hungrily. As another one, a larger one, makes its way towards Zian. Zian, this one will do the same, but instead will burst from the ground near your foot to bite your leg. A s 13 will miss. And secondarily, with a second towards your chest, another miss. You find yourselves prepared and ready for these strange attackers. But they are bugs, after all. Joe Ben, what do you do? Right. Um, Joe Ben's gonna uh, begin casting a spell. Uh, he, uh, uh, seeing bugs and him not being uh, too familiar with the the wilderness, and you can tell that he's a bit scared. In a hasty uh, attempt to get the bugs away from him. You'll see the one that first moved and uh, quickly try and throw uh, uh, the quickest thing he can think of to hurt an, uh, this creature of fire. As it's going to begin casting ignition. Mm. On which one? Uh, juvenile. Excellent. It does have cover from you. And that will miss. It will quickly maneuver its body in a twisting motion. It will pass by and strike some of the dirt. It lets little bubbles out and sizzles on the ground. Anything else? Right. Uh, he'll then uh, stride back uh, away from them. Excellent. As you do, this is to help you with the map. You hear more movement in the woods beyond. And I assume that keeps you relatively close to your party. Yeah. Excellent. Ross. You've been put down by your sister. 
and they begin to encroach. Uh, it seems it's terrifying. Uh, insects that can talk for some reason. Uh, he tries to rack his brain on if he's ever heard of talking centipedes before. He's going to recall knowledge. Go for it. All right. Between the unnerving hissing sounds, between this bright orange coloration, you hear them, you listen to what sounds like hissing, but as you focus on perhaps what they're saying, maybe that could lead you into it, you only hear, Need fetch fingers, and skin. You're too unnerved to think of anything that could be doing this at the moment. Uh, all right. Uh, trying to not focus on their mini legs. This turns his attention to uh, the reliable woodsman, uh, Zian, and uh, will cast a spell. Uh, rousing splash to... Uh, Excellent. And as you splash with water waking him up, is there any magical effect that would be apparent? Uh, no, not, not the outwardly, no. Excellent. Is that your turn? That is. Fang. All right. Um, Fang is going to step back. Good call. One action. Um, and yeah, he, uh, he gave them his, uh, their warning, um, they didn't listen, so he will let out a, uh, Tempest Surge on, uh, the one that tried to attack him. Reflex save? Yep. As you send out the bolt, it twists and coils into the air, but ultimately is not able to get out of the way as it bounces between all of their various limbs. You may roll damage. Uh, it takes nine, and he is clumsy too. Okay. As the bolt strikes into the carapace, you see it interlock, exposing the fact that there is no bones within. The flesh incinerates, and you watch as their mouths begin to twitch, mandibles fall down, and as its body convulses one last time in an awkward angle, it splits backwards and coils up on the ground, dead. Awesome. You just killed wildlife. Do you say that to Fang? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> Is that your right, turn? That's, yep, that's everything. Okay. Fang, what unnerves you is as it lies there writhing, dying, convulsing. It's spending every last moment that it has speaking about your skin. Your fur. See Yin? See Yin is looks at Fang and says, I hate it when you do that. Not even paying attention that the centipede had died. And turns his attention to the one right next to him. He will first. He hyper focuses and it is now his prey. Okay. His second action is he does some hand motions over one of his, his weapon and Ooh, why do I, I? There we go. Let's do that instead. You will cast Gravity Weapon. And then his last action will be a twin takedown. And what that will do is it's basically two attacks in one action. And he will choose to do his longsword first and then his shield boss second with map. Excellent. I have so many toggles. Wow. Okay, and here is the first attack. A critical hit. Well, guys, here's Ranger. There he is. 
And everything's working. Oh my. You're welcome to describe how you slay the centipede. Um, he's fought probably one of these before, except not the talking kind, and knows they have a weak point on their underside. And since they were so kind to pull themselves up and face him, he drives his, wep his sword into its abdomen and works its blade down. Excellent. Almost bisecting it. As you drive it downwards and you feel underneath the weight of your arm, each splitting carapace, it's easy. And just as you get to the very end and it begins to fall to the ground, it falls onto your shoulder over your shield and its mandibles try ever so fruitlessly to bite into you before it goes limp on the ground, dead. And that is my turn. Excellent. This last centipede, knowing that its allies are dead, looks towards this tentacle and hungrily rushes forward. Bring it on. A mandible bite? Or a, yep. a hit. Give me a fortitude save. Oh. Okay. Okay. As its mandibles sink into flesh, you take one damage. I use the sh I use the reaction shield block. And I will I will block it. So I uh I take no damage. Okay. Perhaps that is why whenever you see the mandibles strike onto your shield, you see a thin liquid begin to pour over it as they almost spittle it out towards you. If you didn't know any better, this creature is like spitting its venom onto you desperately and trying to get it into your stomach mouth. It will uh, I raise my okay. arm up and I, it just kind of chews on my arm that's glowing that, uh, that white and it just is uh, unsuccessful. Perfect. It continues to try to do so, but it just doesn't work. Continuing to try to chew on this hardened, light, metallic arm. And how do you respond? Uh, I'm going to use an action to cast Guidance on myself. Uh, then I use my second action to make a strike at the creature. With my katana in two hands. Ooh, tragic. Oh, I meant to add my uh, guidance to that. Oh well. Uh, uh, what is it? Guidance adds a plus one, so it would be a mm, 15. That would hit. Alright, thank you, guidance. Turn you off. All right. Six points of damage. You steal yourself. Uh, I assume you make a blessing under or a prayer under your breath? Yes. All right. And as you swing up with your two hands, after pushing it back for some space, you slice up the side of it and expose its innards. As they spill out, the centipede is almost slain immediately. And that's, yet... That's, that's good for me. I mean, I got another attack. And yet... It has no inclination of leaving. All right. I'm going to make another strike at it. Go for it. I'm going to use a hero point just to just to use it. You just know? to use it? Just to use it? Sounds yep. good. Ah, tragic. Tragic. A 13 will miss. As it continues to lunge forth at you to get a bite. Alrighty, that's my turn. Perfect. Joben. Its innards are spilling out, and yet it desperately tries to get a bite out of Kite. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, with uh, there's being less of them alive now, 
he uh, is able to catch his breath for a set a moment, and uh, he's going to take a moment to think about what these creatures are, and see if he can uh, identify anything about them. Try and do a recall knowledge. Mm-hmm. All right. These are, of course, a giant centipede. But what you would learn about this is that they're relatively common and often a threat faced to anybody that would walk among the forests alone. You would know that they nest in small groups, but they are supposed to only hunt alone, not in groups. This already makes it strange for you. Is there any questions you wish to have about them before I continue? Um, I guess uh, seeing him like spittle this this uh, stuff on uh, Katai, um, I guess I would ask like, what what does their venom do? Uh, it is a slow and vicious torment of a toxin. It allows them to settle down as their prey. It's honestly more like a snake's venom where they bite you, they leave, and then watch you die. Uh, you would know that it would make someone very, 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 very hurt. It can last up to a minute um, or so of pain. And throughout that, they will be harried as it gets worse and worse if it's not their system. It will cause poison damage and eventually clumsiness and very easily could kill if it is allowed to continue to pump through someone's system. Not wanting any part of that, uh, he's going to try something different. He saw lightning uh, from electricity work from Fang, so he's going to try and cast an electric arc directly at it. CN, I assume you cringe? Always. His friends irritate him. It will succeed, fast as can be. It takes half, correct? Two lightning damage as the bolt strikes towards the side of it and then leaps away. Do you want to describe how this finishes off the last centipede? Um, seeing that there was a, uh, a good number of people in front of him and he doesn't didn't really want to make eye contact with this thing, so he hit him. So he uh, made sure he was behind all of them and made sure the lightning uh, kind of arced around the side of Ross and Ty and uh, hit it in like the back, the side of its head. All right. There is a pulsation that hits through the side of the head before it suddenly twitches in a unsettling direction and it coils up on the ground, dead. Leaving you all alone in the woods. As soon as uh, time speeds up, he's going to run up close to everybody. I heard more of them, I think. I told you these woods were dangerous. Well, I mean, that's that's obvious. That's why we're supposed to stay in town. Yeah, that's why you should stay in town. She looks well, very pointedly at Ras. It's not very normal for them to attack us like this. They're acting rather strange. I mean, they're speaking. What? You heard them? Yeah, they were yes. talking about eyes and, and, and flesh. Ooh. Okay. Do centipedes uh, normally speak that way about us? No. It's also not normal for you to be understand. This must be the doing of the ghosts. Something must be going on to make them act this way. You may make me a nature check if you like. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so my, uh, basic action macros, it says I don't have permissions to execute the macro. Um. You, you might need to bring the one yourself in. Like, bring one, like, not use the one that, um, Leah gave us, but actually, uh, quick insert one, quick insert the one yourself. I can't find it I don't in think it's quick in insert. basic macro. If you go to the folder that's next to your hotbar, it should be in there. 
No, it's empty. It's only there for you because when you brought it out, it um, makes it so there's a copy of only for you. I'll just roll it on the table. Yeah. I'll show you where to find the compendium later. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm very puzzled on why they're acting this way. Hmm. Some kind of speaking giants into beings. Not only is it odd that they are speaking, but you know that they at least should have ran as soon as they lost one of their own, let alone lost half of their body and kept moving. But nothing comes to mind of what could be happening. Let's get you all back to town. We have to go Let's find keep an eye breakfast. out for Joe in case he was still planning on bringing that food to us and just we well, were taken to the wrong he, place. He'd be going to the other side of town. Well, I don't know if he knew or not. Maybe he already knew. He could be in danger. He's in the woods by himself. I would like to take a look at one of the corpses and make sure that it's dead like a regular centipede would be. There's no... nothing unusual about the innards that have been splattered all over the place. Make me a survival check. In death, they are as normal as any dead animal. Disturbing as they were, they died all the same. We should head back to town. Y yes, yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, which way? We should follow the woodsman. Uh, Fang will just start walking in the direction of town. Or the, knows. or the fox. He knows Fang knows what's going on, so he will follow him. Just well, actually, see, you know, take up the rear to make sure that everybody's safe. Okay. There is a trail that I assume you take. Yeah, I would uh, take them through the trail. Perfect. As you begin walking, is there anything you wish to speak of? Before you continue. Uh, I definitely, uh, chide Brass the entire way. Scolding him that it was, it's too dangerous for him to be out here. This is, you should stay in town. This is what happens. All that fun stuff. How did, how did this happen? Does anyone Ghosts. else feel weird? Like, why, why is this so... You mean other than what? I... I am... Have, Fang, are you hearing things differently or seeing things differently or smell anything different? Uh, Crypt, am I seeing things differently, feeling things differently, or smelling things differently than what I'm used to in this part of the woods? Yes. Yes, you are. There's less activity, but more of it. You feel as though there's eyes on you, but yet there's no wildlife that it makes itself apparent, save the odd raven that flies by. But something that you notice is that mist is rolling into the trees. The weather is growing stronger. And you get the feeling, though it's only a 10 minute walk to the actual willow shore and the familiar roads riverside roads if it keeps up you won't even be able to see willow shore once you breach the clearing this mist is unnatural well it's kind of it, it shouldn't be this strong this time of year can I make an occultism check? No, but you may make a Willow Shore lore check. Oh, I, get, I have that too. Alright. Oh, I should probably make this hidden. 
Yes, you may. You should. Okay. Jobin, you also? Yes. Yep. Okay. Both of you recalled something. An old rhyme. Hey, uh, uh, Katai, you're the one who uh, who uh, watches over the the, the lamp, right? Mm, yes. Wasn't there like a, a a a rhyme or something like that that uh about the lamp? Yes. Kind of reminds me of of this. Would you like uh, me to recite it for you? Do you forget? No, I, I, I think... Go ahead. Sure. The rhyme goes like this. Lazy Adu took a break and did not light the lamp that day. This provided... Excuse me. This proved to be a big mistake. For then the ghost came out to play. Hazy Mist and Moon of Blood, all because he just gave up. Mm, do you think someone forgot to light the lantern? Uh, Jobin looks up in the look looks up to see if they can see this the what time I guess what time is this the morning or is it still Early like, late morning. Okay. Probably ten AM. But you can't see the sky. There's just mist. So what side of the are we in the north or south side of Willowshore in in the uh, in the west? East, I mean. Uh you would have to be on the bottom side. There is no bridge over to Willow okay. Shore from the northern side. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Um, so we're, we're down here somewhere. Is that the... Uh... At the moment, no, you haven't... I guess we're outside. I guess we're, oh, somewhere we're over here. out here. Correct. Okay. Well, you should we'll reach... We'll see Ugly Cube then soon. Okay, we'll see if his lantern is still lit. Oh, I'm going to have to pass by that gate. Yes, of course here. you have to pass by the gate. Don't you want to see Ugly Cute? Not everyone thinks Ugly Cute is adorable. It is a guardian of the town. You should show him respect. A guardian spirit of some kinds. They can show respect and not, not want to see someone. No, he's waving at you too. Walk by. Honestly, you should wave to him, please. Okay. Well, uh, it's it's very hard to see. Um, Would you like me to ignite a torch for you? Uh, I don't think that's going to help with the fog. Hmm. Then we must trust Fang to lead us the right way and not into some ditch. But if the lantern is, or it forbids, not lit, we might would need the torch. Well, if a lantern is snuff, then it might be too late. Yeah, you all see Fang. He's he's not like paying any heed to like your superstitious talk. He's kind of got like a small ball of fire in his hand. He's using to like light the path ahead of him to see it as far as he can through this mist. Um, actually, I should point out, um, Fane can see clearly through the mist, so maybe he's doing it for you guys. Um, I will, I'm gonna post this up, uh, mm. crypt, and let me know if uh, this will let me see through this weather with no problem. It will not hurt your perception checks, and it will not hurt your attack rolls, which I was about to get to, that everyone will start suffering here. Um, 
It also, I will rule, won't affect your sense direction and survival check I'm about to ask you for to get them back to town. But even with your vision, there's something wrong with this mist, this eerie fog. For everyone else, your vision is obscuring at 500 feet. For you, it is 750. You would know, Fang, creatures within 100 feet of you would be able to be visible, but beyond that, they can use the mist to their advantage. Okay. But the mist will provide no downsides to any of your perception or your survival or sense directions. Because you are one with mist. Sound good? Yep, sounds great. You want to give me a sense direction check? Yep. Perfect. For everyone else, for as long as this mist is here, you're taking a negative one to all perception checks. Natalia is definitely, like, hovering over Fang as we go. Like, she's really trying to hurry him up because she really wants to get back now to Chicken Lanterns. Okay. I guess as we're walking, since they were there, is, uh, uh, I guess as we're walking, uh, Job is going to constantly be uh, casting prestigitation to kind of sort of get the mud and gunk of the wilderness off of him and uh and try and stay as stay dry even though it keeps he keeps getting like uh, uh wet every once in a while because of how misty it is there's something in the air jobin you can tell it's not i would say supernatural it's instead like the snuffed smell of alchemical ingredients. Uh, a fire that's been put out. Strange hodgepodge of smells and sights and sounds that shouldn't be around this area. But it's always just on the edge of the mist. That being said, I do want everyone to set your exploration activities. It looks like you're already setting them, but I do have a prompt. Oh, well, I'm detecting magic. Mm -hmm. I can scout unless someone else feels like they have absolutely nothing they can do, and then they can scout and I can search. Um, up to you. I had you doing sense direction, I believe. Is set an exploration activity? It only has it. the tag exploration, so I'll say no. Oh, sense direction. It's here and huh? under additional. Okay, there, there we go. you go. Uh, I can scout for some. Just keep an eye out, even though I'm less effective at it. Okay. Perfect. And that's what the each of you do. As your footfalls find yourselves on mud. The strange, almost acrid smell lingering in the air. And perhaps some of you jump as you're so on edge when your boots finally hit a familiar bridge. For when you've reached the clearing, you hope to see home, but instead you just see fog. What faint remnants that lie of this village that you call home are bits of rowboats empty, slowly rolling underneath the bridge. Lantern lights, though none that give you any confidence, that sit and hang in the distance, giving eerie, almost eyes to the mist. You know that you'll soon reach the Spider Gate. For your fang has led you right. You do not get hopelessly lost. Thank you, fang. 
But the sight that you see <laughs> as you arrive over this crested bridge and back onto the muddy footfalls of the road that leads you the South Bank is a beautiful shrine. You see its long arcs to hold the huge stone spider that sits in his shrine with a lantern in his mouth to watch over weary travelers, and it's even said to guard this place. Is his lantern lit? There's no spider at all. <gasps> on the ground, oh my God. you see Sorry. extinguished on its side in the grass is an unlit lantern. An ugly cute is nowhere to be seen. I, I definitely start to panic a little uh, bit. I, I look for, I look for him. I look for the statue that doesn't move. Where, where, where is it? If it mm, I don't that's know. Kill you. I call out into the mist. Call. I'm cute. Where it, are you? Your voice echoes into the forest tree and in the distance. You call for the horse-sized stone spider. But there's no response. Fang begins to chuckle. Um. I, I, I guess I'll ask. Uh, this is supposed to be like a, 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 a guardian for the town. Is it like... Is like the... the um, established like lore of the town is that it you know when stuff happens these things are supposed to like activate and do stuff or or is it supposed to be a statue it's urban myth it's unknown on what it is what it can do but it's said that it can guard the town you're welcome to give me as you can appear closer a survival check or a willow shore um, lore check or society I suppose. If I if I recall, uh, a few years ago we set up Ugly Cute here after the Night of the Broken Blades as like an additional defense. Now he's gone. So that's not good. When I select the recall knowledge button, basic action macros, the survival, one of the ones that rolls. I guess I'll just click it and you can tell me. Uh, it is not ruled. Alright, I will roll a secret? Yeah, I'll roll a secret. Okay. Jobin, you kind of rack your brain on this impossibility or what is the lore of this being? And you know, Kitai, or Kitai, I apologize, is right. It was brought here after the night, or it was constructed after the night of Broken Blades. You're also aware that the original plan was for the carpenters to build a Tori gate, a Tianshu gateway on which lanterns could be hung. But it was a Longwa aristocrat that offered the guardian spider from his own garden instead as it no longer fit with his decorations. You remember people talking about in records and how it was the ugliest thing they'd ever seen. But, nevertheless, everyone assumes that it hosts a guardian spirit in particular. Going over to the knocked over lantern. Is it going to be righted? As you kind of, you know this to fit in the fangs of the missing spider. As you kneel down, you realize it is empty of all oil, too. It can be picked up. It can be put back onto the empty shrine. But there's no spider here. And I don't believe you have any oil on you, do you? Does anyone have any oil on them? 
Mm, no. Well, we're heading mm -hmm. towards Hone anyway. Bang. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Maybe we should just get, get home. Go home. Well, we should brace yourselves for what we might find there. If Ugly Cute is gone, we might have a repeat of the Night of Broken Blades. Well, we have made it to town. Take your time to look around here and give me ten minutes. Bang. Yes. There is no sign of chiseling or damage to the rock on which it once perched. But large furrows scar the ground surrounding it. Whether you keep this knowledge to yourself, the marks are consistent with tracks the statue would have left if it animated and headed east out of town. I'll point it out to everybody. Ooh. It looks like it got up and walked away. But you said it went east. That's away from town. Perhaps we just missed it in the fog. Why would he abandon the town? Abandon? You just left then. Maybe something is really wrong. We are talking about a statue. It's probably just some kind of magical trick. So Who is the... The villagers just... Uh, maybe... An aristocrat? From just... Animated it? Told it to go wandering off? Does anyone in the town have that kind of magic? Uh, Fingal, look at Joven. Uh, oh, my, my sister is, uh... Probably the most skilled uh, wizard in town at the moment. I don't think she would do something like this. Well, maybe we should ask her what she thinks of it. Um, well, you, you said it looked like it went out of town. As you... Are you speaking to Peng? Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it looks like it went east. You can see uh, Jobin uh, slightly... Uh, um, relax a bit. There's a big sigh. There's a bit of a sigh of relief. Uh, okay. Uh, well, um, maybe we should see what's going on. Um, people were supposed to come, come find us, right? Bring us, bring us a uh, uh, breakfast. And uh, this doesn't seem right. Maybe we should head to. Head we to... should. We should go now. If the eternal lantern is still lit, then. Maybe not all is hopeless. Well, I mean, we are here and saved. Could I... You could go on without me, but I'd like... Just a few minutes to... Get my grasp on everything. I'll stay with you. All right. Crypt, I would like to spend ten minutes communing with nature, connecting with this fog, and trying to understand it as I get my focus point back. Understood. Is everyone stay um, for ten minutes? Yeah, I won't. I won't leave, uh, but I, I will definitely pace around Spider Gate. Pretty, uh, pretty anxious. If we're all staying, I will also refocus. And across the river, we can see lanterns from the fisheries. Whether they're lanterns, fires, or torches. You're not sure. But there's lights. Uh, while they're doing that, Jobin's going to kind of take a moment to uh, pull out his writing set and just kind of chronicle, chronicle um, journal what just happened. Mm-hmm. Ross, what do you do with the lantern? Well, we need to get oil for it. We've we'll take it with us, so we can get it back to town. Either stop by the barracks or uh, the smithery to get oil. 
and that way it can be wet and put back here. I mean, it shouldn't never be unwet. I can't think of a time when it wasn't. While we're refocusing, can I just make a general perception check just out into the fog? Just to see if I can see any movement or anything that's more out of the ordinary than what's been established. Mm -hmm. Make me a perception check. More towards the east, you hear the faint sound of sobbing. To the east? In towards town. I apologize. Oh, west. Gotcha. Hmm. How close is it, per se? Like, how can I get a judgment you rolled, of how far away you rolled quite good and what i mean by that is you get a good judgment that it's about uh a mile away mile jesus i got super here uh okay I it's more not... like it is more silent around you yeah fair enough uh i will not go after it then if it was closer i would have but um a mile is a bit too far for mm -hmm. me to venture away I don't but mean I will, this. Uh, Let me sorry. clarify. It's not the faint sound of a low sob. There's someone who is actively crying. Oh, yeah, like scream crying kind of deal, like mm. stressed. Stressed, yeah, crying. Uh, I will look back to the spider gate where everyone is resting. There seems to be someone distressed up ahead. They're weeping. Are you done communing? Uh, has it been 10 minutes? This would just be the 10 minute mark. Um, then I guess good? you'd like to check it out. Yes. Uh, yeah, don't, don't leave me. Uh, I'll come in along too. Stay behind stay, you, stay by our sides and you'll be safe. Yep, I uh, will. Say lead the way, and I will follow her to the crying. I will. I'm familiar with this part of town, so I will. Uh, I don't mind taking point because I know where we are for the most part. Excellent. It's a simple pass. You follow the roadside. You go towards the sound, and as you get closer, all of you notice a strange smell in the air. Not the something more. I should say elusive as what I've described so far, but the distinctive smell, the tang of blood begins to fill the air. And at the edge of your guys' vision, though Fang you see it first, Fang you would see bodies, four of them, that lie on the ground in the road ahead. Shy of a mile from uh, Spider Gate. Something happened this dead ahead. I break out into a uh, steady jog. Okay. I assume you all follow. Some. You not want to be left behind. Yep. The mist closing behind you just as quickly as it parts in front of you. You guys begin to trudge ahead. Very quickly, the bodies become apparent two covered in armor spear at their side with long hooks at the end their glaives of the town guard their legs however are what hit you immediately even confined within the leathers and the metals their legs are swollen to a discomforting size 
and their pained faces are frozen in torment. The other two dead bodies are smaller creatures. Small blue-gray humanoids with giant ears. And as you get closer, it's clear they were cut down by the very weapons the guards hold in their arms in death. These aren't Kappa, are they? I can show you a picture of what they look yeah, like. Let me take a look. Yeah. Give me a nature check. Just make sure with, I mean, a uh, thing or... Yeah, I'm not good I sent out my recall knowledge. Yep, I see it. Anyone else? I'll make one just to, just to roll. Excellent. You can re call knowledge without being trained, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't hit you. It doesn't hit you what they are, Zian, um, or you, Feng, because these beings shouldn't be around here. They're not natural to this environment. Oh. But you, Katai, recognize them from many stories. They're the bo tiny bodies. Of what are called Jinkin Gremlins. Uh, looking at these dead corpses of these gremlins, um, I look at them and I see if they have any rotting sin on their flesh. As you take a look, staring down at them, their faces are marred with what appears to be delight, even in death. Excited. They reek of it. They reek of greed. As you smell and see, within their pockets are common pottery objects. You recognize some of them from the local markets. It seems as though they've plundered. But also, you would notice... Their tiny little blades and pottery weapons had nothing to do with the death of these guards, though they were killed by them. There are the clear signs of venom and poison that killed them. Can I make a medicine check on the guards? You may. And if you relay that information, anyone may. Uh, yes. Uh, while Katayan is kind of looking at these crumbling things, the tentacle tongue, uh, definitely, uh, pays attention, uh, when Katai senses the rot of sin upon them, uh, and she looks over to the guards, and she looks back to, um, Fang and Yin. Poison. Can you yeah, help Fang me? Thing is just kind of remarking to see in the um he's never seen these creatures and he just they shouldn't even be here uh when you ask him to help for about poison he looks at you like i wouldn't know what i'm looking at she points to the legs of the guards that are swollen uh, i could take a look i hope you are joven okay do you take off the armor, I assume, off their legs? Uh, yeah, just to get a closer look. Okay. As soon as you do, it releases a large amount of liquid from the wounds. The legs deflate, letting out the coarse liquid. Ooh. Open, uh, 
see if he backs mm. up. You expect Katai, maybe a blade, a weapon, but both of you recognize the cause of death. Not only venom, snake venom. Mushi kind of scrolls over to your shoulder, Joben, and there's the telltale bites of vipers. Mm-hmm. Joe Ben lets out a hiss. Master. Master. Uh, 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 Joe Ben will turn to the group and say, uh, uh, yeah, uh, you see the two point, the two holes here and the two holes here. I think they were bitten by, I would say, vipers. Master, the grass. Uh, Fang, you would understand that, but Joe Ben, you can tell Mushi's trying to get your attention. Yeah, uh, yeah. Fang like is it. looking at the grass, following uh, uh, Mushi's uh, direction. Uh, what what is Mushi? And then he'll turn to look at where wherever they're looking. Hmm. And towards the grass, you can see two vipers that were cleaved in half. One of them is right as the where the halberd of one of the guards fell down, as though it was their last attempt before they fell. You hear a... Okay! Who's there? From above you. Uh... Who's there? Up here! The tower. As you all look above, you can see close by is the Eastern Watchtower. And up on the very top of it, poking her head out just enough to see you all and to point her halberd down towards you, though insurmountably distant to actually hit you with it, of course, is a guard. You're not... Monsters in disguise, are you? No. Uh, p- 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 prove it. Uh. Uh, what's our practices? Come on. Our practices are many and wide here in Willow Shore. Do you mean the oh, she's, she's eight practices? Eight, probably. Or religion. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, huh? We do, do not, not pat people on the head. Do not call a ghost a ghost. Everyone knows those ones. No Listen, whistling do not at lean night. lean against the wall during the day. Okay. Do not leave laundry out at night. You see you slowly pull the halberd back into the watchtower. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe you're not monsters. Maybe you're not. What, what, ha- what happened? I, what are these things? They're... I don't know. They... It was... Horrible little blue monsters. It was well after midnight when they came out of the woods. To the south, they had these trained serpents. They, we, we killed them. But I was the only one who didn't get bit. What happened at the spider gate? What do you mean? We saw that the lantern was not lit. The lantern's the not lit? Missing. What do you mean the lantern's not lit? Oh, no, 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 no. Ugly cute has absconded. Okay, um. But you best remain calm. Panicking in these situations only results in more terror. How can I be calm? There's screams. You said they came from the south? The little things. But there's roars, screams, 
other sounds have been echoing through the air from town since dawn. Everything's been silent, though. So quiet. Um. Uh, um, uh. I I'm, I'm Jobin. Uh, you might remember me from the Mother's Coil. Um, uh, we, we were part of the... The festival. We, we were the ones abducted. The one, no one showed up. What? You're saying something happened overnight? We were attacked? I don't know. My... My... I... I don't know. They just came at us. And I've been up here ever since. I haven't been able to Hiding. go back in. No! Watching. To make sure no one else comes in. Right. You should... You should go home. Check on friends and family. Make sure everyone is alright. That's what I would do. But this fog. For asthma. Bless us. I hope my daughter is okay. I asked Granny who to babysit last night. I worry. My we husband. We will go make sure everything is safe. We will find what's making this fog so you feel well enough to leave. Okay. If We'll be back. Okay. If you need help, my husband... He's at the Matsuki estate right now. Hopefully. The place is nearly a fortress after all. We will we will go there then. You're really Check going. The lantern. Of course. Be safe. Probably the safest place to go, yeah. Um, I hope. Oh, uh. Uh gotta g I gotta check on my uh um, so much stuff is going on. You should take things one step at a time. Check the lantern. Check the Matsuki uh, I, I I gotta go home. I mean, she said they came from the south. My house is just south of here. Here. Um, you're the lantern protector, and you're all going into town. I, I won't need this here. Um, but I'll I'll ring the bell if anything comes from the east. Here. Um, you'd see she brings up a coffer and crate that's up in the watchtower. You said Flynn turns out right by the spider gate. Yes. I have oil. Ah, wonderful. Uh, she will hesitantly, if you guys watch her back, she will come down from the watchtower with the crate. Um, I won't make her do that. I, if she's okay with it, I will, I will go up and grab it myself and just kind of hustle it down. She looks a little bit worried, but yeah, I stare at her with my mask. <laughs> yeah, not scary at all. <laughs> but she steals herself, knowing that you must be here to help. She holds on to her halberd instead of the crate. As you climb up to the top of the 20 foot watchtower, I, I take the crate from her and I, I look at her with an expressionless uh, mask. Thank you. Uh, you recognize. Make sure your family is safe. Okay. Okay. Take care. I will bring the crate down with me. Uh, you recognize her voice as the one who was crying. Yes, I uh, assumed. Okay. I, will, I, I was going to say, I pat her on the head, but we don't do that here. Yeah. We don't do that. It's a, it's a good <laughs> thing not to do it. <laughs> so, uh, I will just climb down. Uh, as you're climbing down, uh, Jobin will uh, call out, uh, Hey, um, uh, ma'am, uh, what's your name? Hi, her, ha. Hi, her, ha. Um, Hi, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll. If you if you if you see anybody any other, uh, if you see hear anything about uh, uh blow this whistle from the mother's coil, yeah, blow blow the whistle. 
And I let her know that Jobin has passed by. We're back in town. Okay. I have a whistle as well. If we find it to be safe, I will blow mine for you. Thank you. Where where would I go? Where, where are you going? I'll just, I'll follow the direction of it. Would you like to come with us? She gives you a look. He gives her a look. Like, safety in numbers, lady. Um, with everything's happening all around, I have to stay at my post. She will be safe here, and she will warn up as if anything comes from the east. And she, she's a guard, right? She's being That's great for us. Yes. Gives Jobin a look like she's doing a great job, don't you think? You shouldn't um, waste any more time. I, I hope she's. I hope she's been doing a good job. I don't know what else is in there. Let's go find out, shall we? Okay. You see doubt on her face on whether or not she should. Um, but she will give you her supplies. I will drop them into your party stash. Oh boy, party stash. Wait, so you guys want to go light the lantern? You want to go back? Uh, we should make haste to the eternal lantern to make sure that one is lit. Well, that one never goes out. It's never been out. It, it's, it's, it's eternal. Unless it is. I feel like I need to go check on my house. If you wander off into the woods by yourself, you're going to come into danger. It's I best want... we He looks at you like, reason. like, I, I live in these woods. I... I point at the vipers and the gremlins. It's safer to remain with us. And we see that we fix the problem before going off by yourself. Fix the, fix the problem? What, what is the problem? The lanterns aren't lit. They need to be lit again. Well, the one lantern isn't lit. Yes. We don't know about the other one. And we can quickly. Why do you think that? it's not lit? What about the poem. The fog. Yes. The poem. That's yes. that's nonsense. That's just something the villagers say. Are the, the gremlins lanterns... nonsense? Are the vipers nonsense? Mm -hmm. We should well, check the gremlins the should not be here. Fang is right. We should check and see what we can find as far as survivors go. The, I the think lore of the lanterns isn't just to ward off unwieldy spirits. The lanterns mark the town as not abandoned. The lanterns are out. Possible these gremlins thought the town was abandoned. So they came. We need to light them again. Make sure everything. Wait, they came, to, but they're not even like native to here. This looks more coordinated. We don't know, but we should check the eternal lantern. If it's lit, then we can figure out what to do from there. He, he, nods. he looks at the town like he's really not interested in going, but then like he looks at all of you. And like the circumstance that we've been in, and he's been like, "All right, let's let's hurry up and do this." Once we are done, we will accompany you to go check yeah. on your family. Well, I don't have. It's not family. Um, Friends. Let's let's go. All right, I will. Uh, I will lead the way. Okay. Check, ooh, check for the stash. We got a ladder. We got a. Oh, does anyone use a crossbow bolt? Uh, we all melees. I can't afford a missile weapon yet. Alright, and then we have one oil. One pint of oil. One pint of oil. Okay. Did we and bring the lantern with us? You uh, did, Ross has it. Yes, Ross has it. We want to light it and leave it with the guard. If we're not doubling back? Probably so. We, if, we, if we double back, we can um, just grab it from her anyway. So we should we should light it and leave it with her. Do that. It can be put up on top of the watchtower. Yep. 
Okay. Is everyone okay with that, or would we prefer to take the broken lantern with us? I don't know. Help her out. Alright. We will, we will light the lantern and we'll do it with her. I mean, it helps the town out also. Yes. Ha looks somewhat motivated when it's brought to her. And she smiles just ever so slightly when she sees it. For when you light it, and it's oil within, there's little spots that look like spider eyes that give off the light. You see memories flood across her face, and she holds it close. You are the guardian now. Signal us if anything goes awry in the east. She just gives you a hearty nod. Good luck. You too. Thank you. Let's go. And so you push on and into Widow Shore proper. So the estate is super far towards the end of town in the east. So we're going to be passing by the bridge. Mm -hmm. Um... I think, at least as we pass by, we can check and see if the lantern is lit. And if it's not lit, we can we can try to light it. All right. You push forward. You say you're heading towards... The Dawn Step Bridge? Yes. And to home. Something that does become clear to you, Feng, because you have the eyesight to see it. The houses are wrecked. Abandoned or locked shut. Vandalized. Mists glide across the streets. The vague shapes of creatures dance in them just beyond your sight and yet you also notice the dam is open Fang those creatures for those small creatures yes there may be more of those things still in town do you, do you let us know about the dam as well? Probably, like, as we walk past it, he probably just says, like, that's odd. Um, but he probably wouldn't be like, look, the dam is open. Kaya's focused, so she won't, uh, she won't question. When was the last time Fang has seen the dam open? It happens very frequently to allow boats through okay but it's a very very shall we say it's a minor engineering marvel it's made from dark gray marble itself it's mm, it has these wooden gates that be, can close and open it to level the lake itself it's less of a problem that it is open and more of its passage for boats to go through. Does that make okay. more sense? Yep, yep. Cool. Pushing what time is it, roughly? Almost 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Okay, so it's not even, like, super early. Okay. Nope. So he probably wouldn't have remarked on the dam at all. Does anyone live on the road that we're traveling? Any family members they want to stop in and check on as we pass by? You need, you need to cross the bridge for me. All right. We will cross that bridge when we get there. After the estate. <laughs> it is quite a trek. As you push on and on, away from this watchtower. I guess as we kind of get like around this area, uh, Jobin's going to look across, try and look across the um, the river and see if he can see what's going on on the other side. 
for his fog. The mist doesn't even let you see halfway to the river. Okay. Let alone across all the way. Is there any sound, like a normal village sound of people moving in the distance, or is it just dead? It's just as the guard had said. Silence. There's an absence of life in this town. Fang will point out to everybody that he can see that these houses have been alive. Like, broken into, or...? Yes, they look like they've been messed with. We take a look, see if, see if somebody needs help. Maybe someone saw something, or someone's still around. The town should be this quiet. Possible they evacuated to Matsuki Estate. Like the guard said. That place is practically a fortress. If anything has gone wrong, at least those in the South Bank would have evacuated there. Okay. I guess, yeah, I, I guess, uh, Fang will lead us all. Let's stop. Let's take a look. Okay. Go to this house right here. You approach to one of the houses around the grain storage huts. These are as normal to many of the various homes in Willow Shore. It has a sliding door, which while is sealed closed, there is a small sized gaping hole that has been cut into the paper wall. You can see in within. It looks as though this place has been rummaged through. Things of metal have been taken. Clothing, items, strewn about. Empty. Uh, is, it, is, is anyone there? I don't, I don't hear anything. Looking at the size of the the entrance holes, do they seem similar to those boys, great creatures we saw? Yes. Yes. Maybe they did. Maybe they did run away and, and went to the went to Masuki's uh, estate. Possibly, yeah. We should probably keep going. There is a smell. All of you would catch it, though it's faint, of alcohol. It's like it was spilled on the trail out here, towards town. Guess there was a party last night so that's not completely part of, but we should stay alert as we get further into town. Okay. How many guards does this town like have? Like how big is the over a dozen? Forest? But not huge. Fifteen? Twenty? Almost. And you said that's about ten percent of the population. Okay. And you said I saw like a bunch of those like little figures, right? Uh, like. You couldn't be like... sure if they were them or something else. Yeah, but Fang is, you know, he he. He would definitely think that like. It's what's obviously what's right in front of me. If this is what would be realistic, right? Mm -hmm. So. Is there, like, a large number of them that he saw, or just, like, a few, like, popping in and out? A few in and out. Okay. 
It seems relatively calm here in the outskirts of town. You worry what might be within town. You're still in the various farmlands of yeah. South Bank. Let's set up a marching order before we get any further in. Just in case we get jumped while we're on the streets. I'll ask again for activities. Yeah, I guess I'm not really sensing direction, so I'm searching. I'm looking around trying to find either some of these creatures or whatever is going on. Very well. So when you say marching order, do you mean like I see one Dale two marching order where we, we set get in like three lines or well, whatever? I mean, just however we wanna walk through the town streets. Um, if if Ian and I want to be in front, or you want one of us to be in behind, just in case something jumps us while we're all moving. I think Fang should be in front with me, because he can see better than we can. Yeah. I will, uh, I'll take up the tail end then, if we want to put the casters in between us. That sounds good. That's fine. I can follow behind Shen and, uh, Fang. And I'll be behind uh, Ross. Okay, so. Pull apart. Keep that you know, we, we could do, we could pull out our tokens just like on the side of the map and like put the order that we're in. If you want, we can do it on the landing page. Yeah, or that. Yeah. So I will. Do you want to say you're like right in front of me, Yin? We'll say like this is where we're the direction, the P is the direction we're going. Maybe we don't have to be in a straight line, but. Right, but I would put Jobin in the middle now. I don't know how uh, tough you are, Raz, so. He's tougher than me. <laughs> Why don't we just do Yin and Fang, then Jobin, then uh, Roz and Kitae in the rear. Like 2-1-2. Two, two. Yeah. What do you want, Kitae? I can move the token. Uh, I can't even see it, so I'm refreshing real quick. Um, uh, you want to hop over uh. to the landing page. Oh, I can move there myself. Ah, crazy. Um, I can just be. We can do two one two, if you'd like. So like this. We're, we're moving forward. Is the P where we're going? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So like this. <laughs> An interesting formation. <laughs> I guess no, I think Kate, you gotta go over here. I, I can't then, see what's happening, but I trust everyone. And then rest, rest over here. Yeah, okay. Good. You continue to prowl through the roads. Eventually, making your way to actual Willow Shore. The industrial district. You know here is where the cloud paper house, where Kawaka runs his helm. You know this is where Jadeite Essentials and Rebels Leather Workers is. But mostly these homes are very much homes and nothing more. As you walk between them, you keep a keen eye out for anything that could attack. But as you walk amongst the streets, it seems as though you are walking through an abandoned town. Can we uh, check by the, the Cloud Paper House? Oh, I want to check on Kawaka. Of course.
You break from the street. As you do so, you swear as you turn away towards one of these houses, towards the cloud paper house. Something runs across the street itself, towards another alley, just out of sight. You look at Cloud Paper House. This, you realize, is likely going to be very well needed to fix all these sliding doors that have been cut into. And as you look at it, it's as though it has been sealed off. There is no sign of light from within, but there is, it would seem, some kind of talisman or mark on the doorway. Mm. Um, and it, it, like, if we're like uh, still standing up a, a decent distance away from it, uh, Trouble's gonna like look look around. Uh, really quick, see if he notices anything other than anything extra besides that weird person we just saw run across. And then, uh, if he doesn't see anything else, he'll move up to kind of check, inspect this, uh, Tasman. Okay. As you turn away to look at the street, you hear from the house, Joe. What? Kawaka, no. is that you? It comes from the house. Do you look, Jobin? He then uh, takes a moment and re remembers uh, one of the practices as he looked away. And then he uh, says to uh, um, Atai, uh, I just heard someone call my name from the house. Do you see anybody there? I will peek for Jobin. Okay. So he doesn't have to turn around. As the whole of the party looks towards this home, you see perched on the roof of it, on one of its many tiles and cornered roof, where there are lanterns that are burnt out and whistling in the wind and mist, a raven completely made from mist, but a sickly green mist. It's staring down towards Jobin and you all. I will get in front of Jobin, like behind him, the raven. Uh, well, in between him and the raven. I will uh, just, I will not take my eyes off the raven. So I uh, talk to Jobin. Just walk away and do not turn around. Okay. What, what, do you, what do you see? What, what's there? Curiosity killed the cat. I see. Jobin! Don't leave! Walk. He's gonna... Uh... Uh, look at the uh, uh, Katai. Um, who's, uh, I guess like I guess the idea is like he's standing with his back towards the building, and like looking at the party who's looking towards the building. He'll look towards K Katai, uh, um, like blink, like do a hard uh, his eyes close, close his eyes, take a deep breath, and uh, say, "Okay, let's let's keep going." It was nothing more than an aberration of sorts. When Jobin moves out of sight, you see the raven take flight, all of you. And as it gets but a few feet from its perching place, it reforms, disapparating into the mist, becoming a part of the mist. Malicious spirits are amongst us. Clearly, just some foul magic trick. Let's keep it moving. must be restless. Hmm. Don't go near the water as we walk. 
As you walk along the way, you hear a howl. A almost serene one. A call to a hunt. As you all walk together down these streets, you would see two strange, ghostly wolves. They apparate from the mist, appearing from nowhere between alleys, as though they're prowling the streets for any would-be intruders. They begin to approach you. Nope. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, maybe they could still be dissuaded. Looking as they approach, uh, do they seem something that I've recognized that may have haunted uh, a home in a uh, Little sure before, as a recall knowledge via my uh, exorcism. Give me a recall knowledge check. Okay. You're unsure. These don't look like sp spirits as you know them. They're more phantasmal, more walking the line. For lack of a better term, they're less spirits and more phantoms. All you know about these sorts of creatures is that this is a form of which they're taking, not their true form. A way they can present themselves to mortals when they walk the material plane. They growl towards you all. I am standing gonna... behind a brass very protectively as this one starts to circle behind us. Okay. I was gonna take out his, uh, his staff and his, uh, I, don't, I don't think they're, they're friendly. They're not natural. Some kind of trick. Uh, Yin, you hear the crackling of lightning behind you. Oh my goodness, he cringes again. It's a spirit, do you speak? Uh, there were spirits more. A creation of a, maybe the mist Remember itself. number one. Remember number one. Be careful with your words. Thank you, side eyes. The three of you. The wolf that you speak to, Siyin, speaks out with a bark. Do you bleed? I'm gonna find out. Give me a will save. Uh oh. You, you got this. You got this. There is an echoing in your mind as it speaks out to you. As you feel a phantasmal fear begin to build up in your mind. I'm going to make sure it isn't a critical success. It isn't. You gain Frightened One. As Ooh. it challenges you on that, begins to step forward and lets out a unearthly growl and you see blood begin to spill from its mouth as though it's the blood of those you weren't here to help. I think uh, Fang would notice that Yin drops his guard a little bit. Yeah, and I, th I think inside of that is when Fang would lash out at this, you stuff. Attack? He hates this kind of shit. Yeah. Very well. 
I'll say then we'll take a 15 minute break. I was curious on your pathing to leave you on a cliffhanger, but this is as good as cliffhanger to any. The, the spooky ghosts. Guys, ghosts are real. <laughs> yeah. uh, the evidence is before you. Yeah, uh, go, yeah, ghosts aren't real. Ghosts aren't real. There's no, yeah, nothing's wrong with Willow Shore. It's not gonna last very long, thing. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how long it lasts. What, what is this a wind evolves. spirit? Yeah. Hey. A wind it's elemental? A wind, Look, wind it elemental. clearly is some kind of magic. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to to keep up our session until you um, got to a point that would fit for a quick break to release all this tension a little bit. So, um, yeah, well done. yeah, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine in town. Everything is normal and hunky dory. Woo woo. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm gonna grab some water and some to drink uh, some to eat then. How how long is break? Uh, I would say just come back on the hour. Sure, sounds good. All right. Well, they attacked first. To be fair. No, no, you're no, you're right. You're in. You're in the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. It automatically excludes Mushi because he's a minion. It's perfect. You might need to take us back to the, to the to the scene. Uh, yeah, I'm doing that right now. Am down my shield spell, so that's rough. That's okay. We'll live. Has it been an hour since we um, woke up the centipedes? Uh, I left the timer on during the break, so no. Okay. Dang, we woke up at like ten o'clock. <laughs> We really slept in. <laughs> Reenactment. Reenactment festival. It's bad. Yeah, we were, we were all drunk, you know? All right. I mean, Fang was drunk on nature. I'm sure. I'm sure he was. Fang. I haven't, had my, I haven't had my morning cup of tea yet. Exactly. <laughs> As you all stand within the various streets, you see abandoned carts filled with fresh produce. You see fish that lay splayed out on the roadside with nothing and no one to take them to the market. You see counters ready to go to sale for the morning market, again abandoned. You see no lights on in any houses, and as these phantoms begin to make their way towards each of you, the one has spoken to Zi Yin. This other one sees the lightning go off, but it coyly looks up at you. Katai. And you would hear it let out a little bit of a sneer. You can. It was stride away from you. Where you going, bitch? And cast fear. Oh. Oh. You can laugh in the face it. of this dog. Yes, yeah, this dog doesn't know, what, doesn't know what he's talking about. Perfect. And as it prowls away, there is a ripple through the air as the mists begin to churn at its call. But you ignore it. You ignore its plea. Katai, how do you respond? Uh, Katai is gonna... Katai, do you... Maybe a little recklessly uh, run. And she's gonna make an attack at it for Katana. Very well. You drive your weapon downwards towards the phantom. Ah. Only 11. That will miss. Okay. 
Um, I am going to release my grip and change it to one-handed. It's a free action. And then using my second attack, I am going to attempt to trip it with my free hand. Okay. I think that's... Is that, is that how that works? I can do it with a free hand? Yeah, you need to have a free hand. Okay. To trip. And that's a... Here it is. It's a... Athletic check, but I do have math on it. I have a math penalty, so it's at a minus five. Uh, against it's fortitude against, DC. It might be reflex, um, reflex, but it'll roll. Um, it'll do it automatically. Yeah. Got it. Damn. Oh, I lost. <laughs> you put your weight into it and you sweep underneath it, and you hit it. But your arm and body goes right through it. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, I felt I fall prone in front of the wolf. Little, little foolish. Oh, no. That's the end of your turn, too. All right, that's, 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 that's the end of your turn. <laughs> yeah, this... Bang. All right. Um, I'm crackling up this energy. I'm going to delay until after... Uh, this wolf and see what he does. Okay. So I'll jump it down to initiative 12. This wolf has cast fear. He did that out of turn, but it didn't sound like you guys were in combat. Is that fair? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's fine, yeah. Alright. It will look at you, see you in. And it will say, Don't have to come near you. You will tremble. Give me another will save. Uh, 14 is a success. Oh, I forgot to target you. I apologize. It looks like this spell only does something if they critically fail it, correct? I th- I think you're using the old version of the spell. No! Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it. Uh, I think yeah, the new version it does damage, and then it's normal, like, basic will save. It does normal damage if you fail. Um, double damage if you critically fail, and it's then you also, also get stunned. Nice. Yeah, 2d4. Okay. Uh, looks like you succeeded, so you take half, correct? Or are you posting it? Um, Thank you. So you push into the target's mind, it dates with a mental jewel. The date steals 1d6 mental damage with a basic will save. So that means, yes, if he succeeded, he'd take half of d6. Yeah, he'll take half. Cool. Thank you. And they have to critically fail the save to take to be stunned one. Yes. Mm. You'll take six mental damage. Three mental damage, I apologize. Your mind becomes racked with screams. You've been missed with fear. How could you face a being like this? You don't even know where to start. Thing. It does All not right, do anything um, else. What do you do? Okay. Uh, Fang is going to stride. Up to here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's going to shoot another Tempest Surge as a swarm of violent wind surrounds it and uh, crackles with lightning. Okay. Reflex save. It quickly bounds out of the way. Alright, so it'll take half. Getting clipped on the way out. So, one day. Uh, it has resistance. To lightning. Okay. 
Two lightning, yes. Uh, it would reduce it to zero, so I assume it takes no damage. Yeah, so if it has resistance, it should take that into account when you click the buttons. But yeah, it would take zero then. Okay. It bounces in and around into this phantom's body. But there is nothing for it to actually hold on to. You don't seem to be able to grip this phantom's frame. And okay. there is a low growl that comes from it. Well, that is my turn. Joben, your allies have tried everything. Nothing is working. What do you do? He's gonna, uh, he's like seeing these creatures. They don't seem to be acting like what he thinks wolves act like. So he's gonna try and search his memory about phantoms that, that, that do stuff like this. He's gonna target one and he's gonna do a recall knowledge. Just for a section. All right, uh, uh, that was Mushi. Oh, sorry. Hold on. That was, uh, here. There you go. <laughs> okay. You rack your brain on what this cop possibly could be, on what you could do. Clearly, they're not wolves. But you can't seem to figure it out. I can't help you here. It's nothing like you've ever seen. Okay. All right. Um, I think what he's going to do then is... Uh, I will say all you have is the eight practices. Okay. He is going to uh, take... Uh, he'll, he'll, he'll stride uh, back a bit here and then for his last action uh, from backing up away from these things he's gonna uh, heft his staff and and fling it uh, towards it and I'll go ahead and cast uh, handle the heck practice. yeah heck yeah excellent I love that spell Zero point eight. Oh, good call. All right. Um... Seventeen will hit it. This one right here. Uh, no, he's not. It's one. this one over here. Okay. Does it have cover from your ally, Ross? Do you think? Um. Yeah, I guess if Ross is standing there, uh, he kind of like like did it as he backed up. So yeah, okay. I guess he would have cover, a bit of cover. Uh, it would still hit. You're good. Okay. I'm just learning path by new rules. Mm -hmm. All right, it will strike the form. All right, let me roll damage. Uh, okay, actually, I need to fix this because it's supposed to. It does the damage of my my weapon, but instead of using um, the uh, my strength or dexterity, my strength modifier for the damage, it uses my int. So I'll roll this, but uh, I'll change the roll a bit. 1d4. And then... Okay. So you want to you add uh, 4 to that. So it'll be, five, it'll be a 7. 7 damage? So yeah, 7 bludgeoning damage. Magical or no? Uh, my weapon is not magical. Okay. Yeah, but it's a spell. You held your melee weapon, which is, make a spell make a spell attack roll on a success. The you deal the weapon's damage. It is the weapon's damage. So. Okay. They seem incredibly resilient to your damage. Okay. I will. Hmm. I want to see if it applies it normally. Yeah, it did. But it does seem to do something to it. Whether you're a magic or the sheer force of it, you leave a hole through the phantom's frame that quickly fills in afterwards. Right. It's my turn. Okay. As soon as it struck, however, 
This one's face turns into a deep guttural, churning, angry growl. Its maw extends up into an unhinged angle. And it looks like that one is now going to attack. See it? I would like to delay after Russ. Russ. Uh, Russ will stride. This one begins to growl after being struck, begins to prowl forth. You move towards yes, it. Yes, and then making a whispered uh, call of protection for Zin against the uh, the phantom, uh, Raz will cast Forbidding Ward. Okay. Looks like you marked it on there, Zian, right? Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. What next, Ross? Or is that everything? That's everything. Zian. He doesn't quite know how to deal with these things, so he's going to try to deal with them like a wolf. Okay. Uh, first action is going to be a stride. Market as his prey. Very well. It's hard to get a hold of being a phantom, but continue. Okay, and then I guess I will move up. Uh, do I want to be in the way or not? It looks like it is extremely angry at Fang, but more anybody, Jobet. I'll let Fang figure out what he needs to do. I'll just move right here and get in the way. Okay. My turn. Katai, this wolf prowls around you. It's turn. It will look down. And it's out of its mouth. Ectoplasm will begin to pour beside you. It has you primed and ready for a bite. And it speaks. What kind of guardian are you? I will attempt to demoralize you. monster are you? Oh shit, okay. Uh, 19 versus my will. Shit, that just that just beats uh, my will DC is a uh, eighteen, so I am I am a failure on my end, or a success, a regular success on his part. Okay. Um, yeah, so have I feared two or one? I think I'm. More or less, usually you're fried one. Fried one. 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 All right. All right. I'm a little spooked at this point. I will leer down at you. And then it will, seemingly angered after you have swung at it with your blade, go to attack at your hand that attacked it. Uh, does it get any bonuses for you being prone? Oh yeah, it'll calculate them automatically. Oh, excellent. <laughs> yeah. My AC well is like a, uh, like a 14 right now. It's rough. Wow, he still misses. It'll make Ooh. a multi-attack. Uh, yeah, even with the map that hits. Alright. Biting down into you. How? For six force damage. As its form 
begins to fill around the sides. It's like the maw is caressing and getting around your body. You feel a cold chill run down your spine before suddenly, inwardly, you are crunched. Not by teeth, but by pure energy. Katai, how do you respond? I stand up with the pack man. Huh? Uh, that is a that is a a move though. So if they do have a tech opportunity, can take it if they want. Only if they have reactive strike though, right? Yes, yeah, only if, if they, they have, have strike. Yep. They do not have reactive strike. All right, and I will stand up. One pack man. Second pack man. <laughs> I've already gotten one hand off the katana, so I might as well. I'm gonna try to trip him again. Oh, I'm frightened, so this is less. Oh. A minus one to this. Alright. Now. Okay. You were uh, one off from getting knocked down again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a good time over here. Uh, my last action, I'm going to cast shield um, on myself. Okay. You raise up a force barrier to try to prevent this phantom from attacking you further. Yep. That's your turn? Yep, that's my turn. Okay. Uh, this wolf will rush away with a stride. I don't think you'd still be frightened, Yen, by the way. Yeah, at the end of my turn, it, it, it drops off at the end of my turn. Yeah, it goes down once per turn. Well, his was was the fear. I don't the know fear spell. spell. Yeah, yeah it's fear the spell. same. It's the same. I read it. Uh, well, they just, just concentrate on it. I w oh. I wonder if it didn't drop off because he did it out of combat. Yeah, maybe. Good call. Uh, all right, this uh, wolf is just going to rush towards the person who attacked it. I can do nothing about it yet. Uh, and it will open yeah. up that unhinged jaw and bite. Oh, yeah, boy. That's, a, that's an ant 20. For eight force damage. Oh, that's not too bad. Not bad at all. It will then use a stride to make its way over towards the other person who attacked it. Um, I'll note that it is using its fly speed as it flies through the air towards you, Joben. You should probably check if these are undead, huh? I should yeah, I was trying. I was trying. Yeah. <laughs> Thing. Next turn. All right. Um, if lightning didn't look that effective, I will hurl fire. Mm -hmm. So I'll cast the ignition at it. And that's an attack roll, correct? Yep. Uh, 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 yeah, that would hit. Two d four damage, huh? Yep. That's impressive. Uh, it is resistant. Oh, hello there. It uh, did not mark it off. So it's... I think you might need to turn on this setting. So the in uh the Pathfinder settings where it says like automation you have to turn it on to, to take into account resistances I see uh, you do 5 damage to it okay that's, that's pretty good um, I'll raise my shield and I'll uh, yell out um, get out of there Jobin suckers hurt okay. tell me twice alright Jobin it looks like it's going to retaliate against your attack all right, Jobin's gonna first stride. Uh, hold on, let me ch check something real quick. Yeah, okay. So he's gonna. He sees it running, running down, running towards him. He's gonna run uh, away from it. 
So he's going to do one. Put it here. And then let's try it again. here and then he's gonna uh as he's like running away from me he's gonna try and try and think of like he saw a fire hit it he threw his weapon at it his things are acting very weird he's gonna try again to recall knowledge make sure i have him select hold on and recall knowledge okay Jobin, these ghostly pale green versions of the real animal, their eerie eyes, the way that they can speak to you, it hits you that they are more eager to frighten you than to fight you, as they did not take the first blow, or did not throw the first blow. You remember a... Shall we say, say... You know that phantoms are bound to areas. You don't think that this thing can perceive people beyond sight in the street. Likely, if you are not in the street, the phantoms cannot see you at all. Um, what was the other thing you were trying to ask for? The I didn't ask a question. Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah. so I, I saw that they weren't they weren't getting hit by stuff, so I was trying to see what, I, what else I can figure out about them. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess if I can ask a question, I'll ask about... Uh, um their resistances i guess uh, so we know lightning fire and um they seem to have some from bludgeoning i'll say if they have any if they have another weakness besides those three uh okay and i can tell you just like a resistance that they have yeah. or all, all mm -hmm. of them one it's you up to you one. based on it's the up to check you. yeah it's up to you but i asked one question so um you can answer it with one item I think I would be more than willing to give you the broad answer. I get the feeling these things are resistant to all. Okay. Um, except, I'm actually going to just give you something that they aren't resistant to. Sound good? Mm-hmm. Force damage. Okay. Well, that's common. What this? I wish I, wish I had a touch missile. <laughs> but, uh, he'll, he'll, and as he runs by, he'll you know look towards him, and then he like stares at him for a second, and then Fang, you hear him say, Man, "I wish I had magic missile." And then that's his turn. All right, perfect. Uh, Jobin, that will bring it to Raz. Uh, Raz will spin an action sustaining Forbidden Ward on uh, his chin. Sounds good. And then we'll. Uh, target thing and clear the uh, the blood that is uh, bubbled on his fur. Oh, sorry, we both for that. It looks like it rolls it when I drag the effect over. Oh, okay, okay, good to know. Uh, but I'll take yours since it was for. Oh, damn it. Okay, no, no, it, it gave me the tip. It gave me the tip. It's good enough for the future. Thank you. That's Ross. That's Ross? Yep, that's See you. <laughs> Alright, we get to chase this guy around the battlefield. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't seem interested in you. I know, not yet. There's <laughs> one stride. There's two. Now the question is, do I think I can do anything to it? Still your hunt prey, right? Yeah. I'll just attack it with a regular strike. Cool. That's a first attack on hunt and prey. All these toggles. And there we go. Uh, that That's a crit. Uh, and before you roll damage... Is immune to precision damage. Okay, that's what I was gonna wonder. There is no weak spot on this enemy. It's still a ten, right? Unless he's resistant to it. Ah, uh, he is resistant to it. So that's um, less. He is resistant four, which is enough to do. Oh, I apologize. 
Uh, so he was here. I uh, will just kind of make this muddy. Uh, so he did 10 damage. He had 6 HP left in his spiritual form. So, even with all the resistances, that crit is just barely enough to eke him over the edge. And as you slash through the form, you just reared around it the most massive spirit as possible. And it dissipates, uh, de into the mist, leaving no trace or body. Yin is kind of shocked that it worked, but he's relieved. That's his turn. All right. This wolf looks at you, Katai. Yeah, I'm, I'm 1v1ing this wolf in the corner, having a blast. Did you swing at him? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, actually, I I did make an attack at him, and it would have been countered as an attack because it was a trip action, so. You just tripped it. I technically did. I, I attempted to trip it. You attempted to trip it. Okay, mm -hmm. it will look up at you. Uh, and it will speak. Where are you people? Where is your home now? Stupid dog. Uh, okay, so I'm taking half of that. Just, just... Okay. That one point of damage comes from its last line. Why <laughs> couldn't you hear them? Come be here. What do you do? Uh, Kai is super unsettled. Uh, does not respond to this dog. Uh, I am going to use an action to um, recall knowledge on the dog. I want to try to find out if this thing is undead or not. Okay, you may roll me Willow Shore lore. Alright. Okay. I guess my more specific question is, it, um, will it take damage from Holy? No. Damn. This creature isn't an undead. Alright. Okay, uh, uh second may action. Ask another question. Oh, sorry. Um... Can I ask what its AC is? I'm not sure. Is that a recall that knowledge? I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's it? usually information you can give. Yeah, you usually, yeah, it's, it's really up to you, but yeah, it's a. Uh, I've seen yeah, other DMs staff. do it too. I'd be yeah, willing. I'd be willing to let you have that. I'd also be willing to let you have something that Willow Shores legends would have about these creatures. I'll let, let you take either one of the two. Hmm. You're tempting with lore or metagame knowledge. Mm -hmm. I'll take the lore. Okay. Um, very well. You would know that by practice they are ethereal beings, but they are not ghosts, but phantoms of legends within Willow Shore. The most important thing to do is to use the first practice and to address them with friendly greetings. And doing so can even cause them to lose their power or discorporate entirely. When you say use the first practice of Willow Shore, do not call a ghost a ghost? Oh. Excuse me? Uh, yeah, do not call it that, and just address it um, with just with friendly greetings. Greet a okay. ghost as a ghost. Just greet it as uh, a creature. Yeah, okay. Don't let it know. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, that's my first action, then. Second action, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna look at this dog. Noble creature. Good morning. You, it's going to be a two-action activity. That's fine with me. I got two You calm yourself? Left. Give yeah, me a diplomacy I check. I take a deep breath, and I, I calm myself. Alrighty. Oh, my diplomacy is really good. Then you have nothing to worry about. 
Should I make this hidden or um, would you like a blind? You can roll it as though it was an attack. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to use a hero point to re reroll that. Go for it. How about why not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the attempt was made. It looks up at you. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I don't blame you. You tried <laughs> to tear at me twice. All right, that's my turn. All right. Bang, for whatever reason, Katai just started to say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> How's the morning today? Yeah, Fang shakes his fucking head. These people are crazy. Uh, he'll stride next to Ross. Um, and uh, he will just go ahead and launch uh, some more fire at the creature. Should try greeting it with kindness and see how that works out. Well, if you read the ability he posts, it says if you crit fail, he's immune to it for a round. So I will not do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I <enough>. will cast <laughs> Ignition. <laughs> It just looks very annoyed at Katai enough to not pay attention to anybody else's greetings. <laughs> I'm very annoyed at it, too. All right. Heart. That'll miss. I'll reroll it. Oh. Oh, okay. Nope. That's me. Not going to do it. All right. I look even more annoyed. Joben. Oh, he thinks fire has worked the best so far. So he's going to first take... First things first is... uh. Stride up here. And then again, some following a doing something similar with uh as Fang. It's gonna target it and go ahead and cast uh, ignition. I'm gonna say based on the circumstances it doesn't have cover for me this time. Cause you kinda I can get to one side of it pretty yeah. easily. Ooh, good shot. Alright. Uh, oh. So you, you, I guess, the way magic works in the system is that instead of I me hitting a critical button, you have you just do the double, double. damage. Uh, yeah, you got it. It has resistance two to your fire damage, so it'll take eight damage. Sound good? Mm -hmm. All right. As you rend a section away from it with this orange flame, the sickly green pale wolf reform towards looking at both of you. It looks upset. Its mouth splits to the size of half of its body. And uh, as he does that, he'll like, uh, you know, sink behind uh, 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 Fang and, and Ross and say, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wolf. And then that'll be his turn. It is on fire, by the way. On a crit success, a uh, target takes 1d4 persistent fire. Cool. Let's drag that onto the token and it should work. I will do so. All right. Ross. Uh, Ross is going to do it until after Xi Yin. Xi Yin. All right. Xi Yin is not the brightest bulb in this pack. So he's going to keep doing what he's been doing. Um, he can not, cannot see it, but he can hear it. Uh, I'm going to move first. Listen, I asked the wolf how its morning was going. You can't do any worse than that. Always one space away. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Is that 20 or 25? That's 25 right there. Um, I need a reach weapon. I'm going to hunt prey on this lovely young wolf right here oh as my second action okay and i guess i'll just get in the way um you flank it right here yeah i'm thinking about it it's gonna move though sure is <laughs> ah let's get right there that's my turn all right ross Uh, Ross will sustain Forbidden Ward 
and then targeting this uh, mist will cast uh, Void Warp upon it. Okay. You will fail. This is void damage. It is. Okay. It will. T it has resistance. It will take three damage. It is pulled further and further apart. But it's not enough to finish it off before it flies through the air, through the wall, and over your allies to Jobin. Okay. Uh, persistent fire damage happens at the end of its turn or the beginning? Um, the end. end yeah. Sounds yeah, they roll a flat check and take the damage at the end. Alright, it's gonna go for a bite. It's gonna go for a second bite. Oof. Oh no. It's a excellent. Wizard. No. Three force damage. Alright. Alright, persistent fire damage will take place when I end turn, correct? Sure will. Three damage. It takes one. It gets um. a flat check. Oh, that's right. To get out of the uh, persistent fire damage. Nope. Alright, good time. Alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna run this way. I'm gonna run this way. Two strides. And I'm gonna give up on kindness and choose violence. You hate to see it. Eh. No! Oh. Um, <laughs> this is what I get oh, no. for choosing violence. Mm. Alright. Uh, I run behind them and I try to flank. And I take my katana, and I whiff. Excellent. <laughs> that is my turn. You cut through the tail, there is no tail. Gosh dang it. Fang. Yeah, uh, Fang's just got this fire in his hand, and he kind of just, uh, shoves it in the wolf's face. Perfect. What you got? Sixteen will absolutely hit. Nine damage. What does it look like when you deapparate this mist? Um, yeah, he just kind of, uh, the wolf just like took a bite at Job and, and Fink kind of like takes that opportunity to like shove this fire into his side. And you can see the fire kind of like just, uh, begin to like fill the, the space of the phantom and burst outward. As it bursts outwards, there is nothing left of the sickly green mist, save what barely makes its way back into the mist. And you're left alone in the streets, yet again. Odd question. Does my hunt prey go away when it dissipates? Yes. Yes, it does. Bang, are you okay? It got me pretty good, but I'm still up. Oof. Doesn't that hurt? Should we take a moment and and do our wounds before continuing? Yes, let me see that that cut. You're tougher than you look, Fang. Well, oh. thanks. I guess. Yeah, while they're, yeah. while they're treating my wounds, I'm just gonna kind of like stare at the fog and commune with nature. All right, so Ross, why is this happening? The lanterns are out and the ghosts are. No, he, that, that's in his brain, <laughs> Muffin. It's the ghost thing. He's thinking that to himself. It's the ghosts. 
Yes, I guess. Oh. Tragic. We will, uh, we'll use zero point for that one. Okay. Oh, can I cast Guidance on you? Um, just kidding. You don't need it. I guess while you're treating, uh, him, I'll go ahead and, uh, I think if you Take. use the treat wounds, sorry, I'm so sorry. If you think if you use the treat wounds to the basic action macro, it'll roll them for you. Which are you? Kind of the mini game. Are you doing this in the middle of the street? Uh, no. I, I we, guess so. I mean, uh, well, well, we we found out that the the phantoms only have a certain eyesight. It's in the street, so if we at least move into one of the buildings, even if they're ruined, I think that'll be safer than staying out in the street. I mean, if you if you mention that, then yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Dam, I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's easy to find a, an abandoned spot where doors have been broken into. You can see pot, pottery and cookware have been taken from this place, including knives and whatnot. And so is clothing. Go on. What you got, Joanne? Uh, I was going to say, uh, I'll go ahead and um, take a moment to uh, take out his book, and he's going to write down what, what has happened so far as a way of refocusing. Perfect. You can roll that to treat wounds. Nothing seems to disturb you, though. You do begin to hear things just on the outside. There's a 11 for amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I would use the basic one, but on this screen I don't have a token I can select, so... Uh, I, I, I don't yeah. even have the 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 HUD. Oh. It's fine, though. Yeah. I actually don't like the HUD. I normally use a character sheet, but... We need to treat wounds on everyone else for going on, or... How are we, how are we looking? I've I mean, taken some oh. scratches, but I'm fine. Yeah, I've taken a hit, and about a third—I've taken about a third of my HP, but I'm okay. A fifth of my HP, but I'm okay. Um, I have fourteen HP. Okay, well, I'm, it looks I'm like you. Mind, I don't mind to treat wounds, but yeah, I, I can treat someone again, but it just—it'd be the second ten minutes. Just... Yeah, that's the thing. I can treat somebody too, but that would be can also you... be, so we could treat we could treat two people if we're willing to take twenty yeah. minutes, twenty more take this second well, time well you can um well ross treats fang you can treat me jobin yeah that's what i'm saying so it'll be 20 minutes total of us waiting it would just be 10 minutes we can, well you he's, can he's trying to time. refocus also I, yeah oh, I, I refocused sorry. on, on oh, the 10 sorry. minutes yeah yeah sorry 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 okay yeah um i don't think we should wait right. 20 minutes we can just, yeah just wait the time okay yeah i'll, I'll just keep it noted what we get. I'm prepared, otherwise. Alright. I have elapsed time. Alright, yes, it's ten minutes, and I guess we'll move on. Do you stick to the streets? Probably shouldn't. Is there any way for us to kind of walk along? Gosh, the water's dangerous, too. House to house. Yeah, I guess we have to just jump house to house. Okay. What if we just walk down the street, but we treat them like any other being of the town? What I learned, I think that would work, probably. If we greet them with kindness and do as you say, we might be fine. We could try that. That, that's better than me jumping from jumping over fences and stuff like that. Yes. You see the fire kind of dance around Fang's fingertips, but he'll nod. Who was the most charismatic of us? Who was able to greet these things with diplomacy? Oh, I can welcome them to our town. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Maybe we can learn why they've 
taken up residency. Don't mess it up. Not all spirits have to be feared. Yeah, I guess we're walking along the road, the road then. So. House to house as well, or just staying close to houses in case you need to jump in? Yeah, yeah. We'll, we're we'll gonna... We'll just be on, we'll be on the south side of the road. Yeah, yeah. we'll let, uh... And if we end up having to interact with them, we'll, we're gonna have, uh... Rass, mm -hmm. try to... Charisma, are we out of it? No worries. As you walk along, the mist clings. But there are no more spirits that take a form. No more phantoms that harry your path. Though there is a clang in a house every once in a while. But all of it pales in comparison to what you see as you get closer and closer to the bridge. For one, from a little bit of a distance, it's immediately apparent. The first time in memory, the flame of Willow Shore's iconic stone lantern is extinguished. You see blood smears all across the gray stone of Donstep Bridge. And there is a large humanoid figure that sits on a throne made of stolen furniture heaped on the bridge. As he drinks from a brewing pot, several smaller humanoids around him caper about, apparently mimicking and mocking death throes and reactions of recent victims that they've attacked. The Eternal Lantern is gone. At least extinguished. Uh -oh. is, do we see the actual lantern itself, though? Like, is the structure there? Yes. Okay. Oof. Okay. It's got a heart attack. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Katai is definitely twitching um, when she sees the lantern is out. That's her thing. Allow me a moment. It seems as though a handout is broken. Before you think of doing anything just yet. I run in. You hear lightning coming from the sky. <laughs> You've called lightning already? <laughs> He's got lightning bolts over there. Chain lightning. I, I can have a lightning bolt strike 120 feet away from the sky, yes, that is correct. Oh Hell my yeah. gosh. <laughs> well, we might need it. As you hear the... <laughs> you'd hear from the larger figure a low drone singing as he takes drinks from the pot. What is that? Wow. Yeah. Is it Cyclops? Is it though? Well, I don't yeah, know. Not, not, yeah, it doesn't I don't know. look like a Cyclops. I don't it know has a single eye, is. but it's, it's not a... Can we make like a perception to try to identify it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to... Yeah, I'd like to... Because I can see through the mist pretty well. You can see it just fine. And it doesn't, it seems like they are so interested in their little mimicries of clearly other villagers being ransacked, attacked, and killed. And this figure just sits there, takes a drink before letting out. <laughs> they seem to be doing two different performances 
You guys may roll me free con knowledge. Uh, we don't have our tokens on this map, so we can't. Uh, here, I'll click on click on my change rolled skill. Um, hmm. what would I think this thing would be? We'll go with the troll lord. See if that works. Job in. You're the only one that recognizes the language. Because you can understand it. What language are they speaking? The language of the Fae. The big one is, at least. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did I get, it? Did I get a gist, of, gist of what he was saying just, just before? He is singing about how tasty it was to pour the sake on the person's body before consuming the flesh. Kind of remarking the change in texture. Um, yeah. Um, as we're like, kind of like first coming up here and hearing that and then seeing it and once we all like kind of realize we, what we saw, Joba will say, they're, they're speaking they're speaking the language of, of Faye. They what are they saying? Food. What did they say? He's singing. Singing about eating and how it tastes when you pour sake on the flesh. Oh. They shouldn't be here. It seems diplomacy Are, are we doing something question. about this? Oh, yes, we, we are. can't let them stay here. They've destroyed the lantern. Ty is starting to stalk forward. I will... Murderous intent. I will go through your recall knowledges before you go any further, just so mm -hmm. you know what you know. Okay. The applicable lore of... Ras... You don't recognize this being. Fang, you know this isn't a being of nature either. However, Ziyin. Strangely enough, you've heard of these beings through your time in the city. This creature is what's known as a busso, oftentimes compared to cyclopses. They both, however, are known to deny commonest ancestry. They are individual in nature. What bussos are are tree-dwelling folk with a simmering desire to consume the flesh of others. They heavily supplement their food with leaves and root crops. They possess significant knowledge of agriculture even, and have an innate power over plants themselves and being able to grow them in size. In regards to meat, however, the problem with them is they reject the flesh of non-sapient creatures. In particular, they like humanoids. Their bodies even reject non-humanoid meat. It leaves them sick and weakened if they do not eat it enough. Nonetheless, you know that it is of legend that when driven to starvation and when a village would die due to poor crops, this legend of a one-eyed Busson being the only savior, but at the expense of some of the villagers for meat. He tells everyone that tale. What is, what is, what is a monster like that doing inside, like, doing in our village? Wait, so you think they were 
invited here? No way. No one would do such a thing. We haven't had any crop troubles. Lantern out. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing we're... Ugh, I don't want to think about that. Um, we got to do something about this, right? So I, I need to cross the bridge. And let us clear a path. Um, Fang is trying to gauge how stealthy the party is. Uh, we're okay. You can park sheet. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Okay. If we can get the jump on them, this could be easy. Are they? Is the throne facing us on the bridge? Yes, I can put you on the map if you want. Uh, yes, that'll be helpful. I'll just say that you, at the moment, you guys are a hundred feet away. Okay. And uh, with uh, is that how you pronounce it? How you how you spell it? Uh, B U S O. Wait a so the eternal lantern is just to itself It takes a swig of the drink. As the Jenkins stop performing for it, even for a moment, stopping choking each other as they're showing all of them picking on this one smaller Jinkin as it's probably the, well, the victim that's being performed upon. As soon as they stop, the Bousseau rears up with its foot and almost crunches one's leg snapping it in twine with its pure strength. Hey, let's have a day. Before it puts its hands together and all of the rest of them begin to laugh. And that seems to be enough for the Bousseau to let out a chuckle and then have another drink. Before it checks, notices it's out of alcohol and begins to yell at them for more. And they don't seem to share a common language. These gremlins don't speak Fey. Yeah, and, I, and the when the gremlins are start like communicating with each other, the, are they? Do I recognize that language? Are Common. They? They're just a hundred feet away. You recognize yeah, the vague vowels of, of Common. Okay. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to sneak up on them because they're just right there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they're just right out in the open. I don't know. How do we wanna? How do we wanna approach this? Okay, I'm going to explain a spell that I have and how it works. Okay. Uh, it's gonna take me six actions of not moving, but it will let me blow them all up. Right. Uh, keep, keep going. But I would need to get within sixty feet of them. To do it, or they run towards us. We can we... protect you while you do that. If we think that they'll run towards us, I can. We can pull them at range, and I can start charging the spell up. It'll just take me time to gather can all you... the electricity I need. Can you ping the spell? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. What 
what I was thinking. I could turn into a fox. Sneak up to that tree. And start casting it there. But once I start gathering the energy, they'll probably notice me. Okay, so that that six rounds is an emanation to all creatures. Um, Around my target, yep. Yep, so we just need to keep in mind if we're going to do that, someone might get hit by it. Um, but that would probably be okay. You can tank it. Right. Well, I'll, 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 try, eight, to, right? I'll try to aim it. Yeah. Do you pick the... Can you aim it after you finish the casting, or do you have to pick a spot? Well, I guess it's a target, huh? Yeah, it's a 10-foot okay. emanation of who I shoot it at. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a, a good thing. I think we should try. Um, do we want to nope. just try and pull them all in? Uh, I mean, I think that might be the best bet. Um, if we stand... If we try to pull them over here while you stand back here... You think that'd be oh. that'd be good enough? So the way this can work, um, I don't know how long it, it will last, but if uh, uh, Katai and uh, Zian are able to get in get in there, once they are surrounded, um, uh, uh, we can have uh, Fang delay for a bit, and you guys use that as an opportunity to run, and then he'll jump back in and let and release the release the spell. So do you, want us, do you want us to go in, debate them, and then run away? Well, if they get too close. Will the kindness thing work with these? I don't, I don't know about these things. I don't know. I could go ask, speak with them, <laughs> see if I can warn anything. I mean, the I gods did kill the Grimmons, but uh, you go maybe talk it was the... a misunderstanding. You want I, to I don't. To the people over there? You sure do you understand that? that? Do, do you know understand? Do you know how to speak Fey? I, I uh, don't think these are these are not the same creatures. No, I, I can't speak Fey. And I mean, as soon as they see me channeling this, they're probably gonna know yeah. we're not here to talk. This is. I mean, we're not here well, to talk either. From, way. from what we from what uh, Season said in his story, uh, they usually make deals with villages, so that might be a way of getting a, a pretense for us to get in position. Okay. I like that idea. Let's use that to get in position and make a deal. A fake deal, obviously. And then, while we're talking, bang, if you want to start charging that up, let's see what we can get out of it. Alright. Ross? I can translate. I don't want to be up there, though. Ross is... Just get me up to this bush right here. You have a way to send me a... Uh, tell me what they're saying from a distance, Jobin? Uh, uh, I, I could. Uh, actually, let me check something here. Oh, but Jobin would have to translate for you to them, because they don't speak common. Hold on, let me see here. I did not bring message, no. Don't, I'm not able to do it now. Uh, oh, I wish, wish I knew this was gonna happen today. Well, I guess actually I don't wish this happened. Uh, either way, um, we can we can walk up together. I don't want I don't want I need to get across the bridge. I feel like this is our best way of getting. It. All right, let's do this. Son. Do you want Do you want uh, Yin and I to go up there with you? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, before we go, I'm just going to do this preemptively because I would hate these actions. I'm going to just cast a two action heal on myself before we get in there. Why don't you do a three action heal? What? Heal everybody around. Do? It'll hit everybody. Okay, I'll do, I'll do a three action then. What's your three action heal look like? Uh, for the sake of it, we're not going to have it to be super flashy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Is it like a light show? <laughs> Have you ever been uh, a Burning Man? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I oh I privately rolled it. Uh, I don't even know what I rolled. It's a mystery. 
Four. And right click and reveal. Four. Awesome. Alright, everyone can take four, four HP. Oh, that worked out. Alright. Uh, it's, it's, it looks, uh, I would say it would look like a, like a sunburst, but in this instance, because we're so close to the river, I'm gonna say it's gonna look more like, uh, like waves of water. Kind oh, of, uh, washing over. around some folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Washing over wounds and leaving nothing but scars. Yeah. Alright. And then I guess the plan for uh, for next week, so it's twelve oh nine, is that we are gonna go forward and try to stall okay. the diplomatic talks while Fang gets into position. To yes. And so Joben and Ross approach, heading onto the map. As We're you do. Oh, okay. The Jenkins all look up towards you all, seeing you guys approach. And they all turn around and look up towards this big figure. They begin to speak. More villagers! More villagers! More performances! In, in, in Faye, uh, Joba's going to say, um, uh, Greetings. You see the eye flicker up towards you. And they all look up in surprise towards their leader, it would seem. And the leader lets out a bit of a chuckle. And he will wave all of the Jenkins to the side. They all cower. Kind of back away to clear a path. As the figure groans and stands up to a lanky, disgusting seven-foot height. It holds a kukri in one hand, alcohol in the other. And it speaks... You look tasty. Oh. Gurgle gut. Come close. Uh, Jogan will turn around and, and kind of translates. His, his name's Gurgle gut. He wants us to come closer. Um, and then he'll turn back around and say, uh, um, sh sure. Uh, uh, what, what has happened here? Uh, turn back and say that it Let's just puts a hand up to its ear as though it's not able to hear you as it takes another drink and as you guys approach the first boss of the campaign will come back next week this is the final boss right <laughs> oh, this is the last one of this side yeah, of the river yeah on this side of the river <laughs> Wow, I hate this thing. <laughs> that, uh, thing's creepy looking. Yeah. Ah, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad he's not a spider. Oh, the lantern's out. He's turned the lantern off. You monster. Oh, it was, a, yeah. it was right. all the plan. Oh, you monster. <laughs> Little you guys into a sense of security. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the first... I wish we had more time. I do wish we had more time, but we had to have a session zero. That's fine. Um, no, it was good. Next week. We, yeah. Good, I'm, good cliffhanger. Uh, I'm curious to see how you guys handle your conversation with Gurgle Gut. Um, we'll see how much of a conversation there is before he gets Goku spirit bomb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do plan on starting with Reed. Oh, man, I should... Read the air when we start next session. So, perfect, perfect. All right. Nonetheless, I hope you guys have enjoyed. I'm gonna turn off the stream. Thanks everybody for tuning in for the first episode of Season of Ghosts. I think we'll actually get into some real good and juicy stuff next week. Now that they figured out that something's gone wrong with the town. Take care.